Today we are playing an aggro destroyer. We are talking about an Esper Exile tribal list built on the foundation of Stonebinder's Familiar. Stonebinder's Familiar is a simple one drop that's going to grow over time as we exile cards from the battlefield. Now, it's going to pair obviously really well with things like uh, the Brutal Cathar, Skyclave Apparition, Gelatinous Cube. Uh, we've also got a really interesting uh, combination paired up with Jacob. Jacob is going to allow us to get card advantage through its exiling mechanics, which helps the Stonebinder grow as well. We've also got a really interesting and fun top end with the Mind Flayer. The Mind Flayer is going to allow us to steal creatures and smash our opponent's face with it in the late game. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the Undercover Operative as well as the Glass Pool Mimic, which is going to allow us to copy not only the Mind Flayer, but also our exiling creatures to keep our tempo grind play going and uh, to eventually tilt our opponents or <laughs> smash their face to oblivion. Uh, this deck is so much fun to play, but if you guys want the full deck breakdown and analysis, it will be at the very end of the video. So stick around for that. Um, in the meantime, there's a link in the description below for the full deck list if you guys need that. And if you enjoy content just like this or you find any value in today's video, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button as well as the like button, it's two free ways to help grow and support the channel. And I'd greatly appreciate it. But in the meantime, enjoy the games, guys. Peace. All right, everybody, here we go. We are playing an, an exile tribal kind of a list. So basically the whole deck focuses on exiling in multiple different ways mostly though mostly to steal our opponent's permanence uh, which is really nice because it's going to open up the lane for our attackers almost like a tempo style of a build or list um this hand is really good to start with here this is not bad at all let's hope we find one more on tap land here uh to maybe hold open the touch of the spirit realm but um ultimately this deck likes to get down the familiar early so i'm glad we have that right away and uh, we get to go right to work, man. Right to work of exiling our opponent's things. And uh, hopefully putting some pressure on him. Let's go. We have some really cool, interesting toys in this deck, man. I'm really excited to showcase a lot of this stuff. It's going to be very interesting. Ooh, little Vanishing Verse action. I like that. Let's go and attack in here, obviously. And uh, Vanishing Verse will hit maybe whatever creature they decide to play here. Obviously, the, the uh, two-drop advisory comes to mind. Okay, that has blitz, but it's whenever it dies, create a treasure token. All right. I don't mind that at all because this is going to be a very good vanishing verse here. It didn't have haste, which they lost a lot of value there for not having haste. Stone binders go up by one. We've got ourselves some pretty respectable creature, uh, respectable sized creatures here. If they attack in, I mean, we can trade with the stone binder familiar. I don't think that's the play because our stone binders have way more value uh, to be added than the Kamano does because they can grow over time. Kamano is going to need to get, you know, more mana invested into it if it's going to get any bigger. So I like, I like what we're seeing here. Feeling pretty strong about our board state at the moment. This deck is pretty messed up though, if I'm going to be honest though, uh, because we take all of our opponents, uh, you know, permanents off the board as they play them. And it gets very daunting uh, for the opponent um, because imagine, you know, you play all your stuff out here and every single time you play a permanent, we steal it, we attack, we steal it, we attack. It's just this relentless, you know, onslaught that's so hard to uh, get out of. And then on top of that, you know, we run things that steal their creatures as well to use them as our own. So it gets pretty hard to hard to deal with. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and obviously go with the apparition here. We have glass pole mimic as well, so we can get that down the line. Stone binders are now three threes. Don't want to play the mimic as a land. <clears throat> Double blue is already on the board. We don't need a we don't need another blue source uh, to play the cube. We actually need a black source. So the uh, glass pole mimic is gonna be a nice copy of the apparition here. Kamano's just going to keep attacking. I think they want the treasure more than anything here because they, they might be hurting to hit their land drops and then uh, might want to cast some bigger spells. We'll see. Nope. Okay. That makes this part easy. Uh, Skyclave Apparition. Um, it looks like they have instant speed magic, which means probably some burn spells. Yep, Skyclave's gone. Skyclave is gone, which means Glass Pole Mimic's going to need another target here. Uh, 
It's not terrible, but it's not exactly the best either. I uh, would love to see another black source come down because the gelatinous cube answers these, you know, tokens very good. Okay, they're going to actually trade here, which is nice for us. Could be another burn spell though. Voltage search is in hand, so. Creature gets 3-1 and gains trample. Okay, so <clears throat> they just trade there, which is fine. Totally fine. We still have another playable exile uh, spell here, which is also great. Uh, gets the gets these uh, Stonebinder Familiars up to uh, potentially lethal here. So we'll see if they attack. It's going to be a pretty bold attack if they do because they're leaving themselves open. So they better have some playables in hand here. Four mana to work with. Mono red. Got to have something, right? Raiju. Got it. Well, that's gone. And uh, we win the game. You'd love to see it. We get the black source as well, so it would have just continued this onslaught, honestly. Uh, pretty easy, pretty pretty straightforward first game. You know, just keep just keep playing your spells. Really, that's that's all there is to it. You just keep playing your spells on curve. You keep stealing your opponent's things, and uh, you eventually end up winning. Love this thing, man. Hopefully, we get to play some other uh, mechanics, but uh, so much fun, man. This deck. All right, very smooth first game. Very, uh, very good matchup for us, I think, in the most part, uh, for the most part. Obviously, if we would have ran into more burn spells, we would have been in a bit of, uh, a bit of trouble, but, um, ultimately, didn't see too many burn spells, so we, we were in pretty good shape here. This hand is okay. It's not great, to be honest, because we have all three mana here, but we do need double white to play these two spells, so I'm hoping we find another white source off the top. Also, the early drops would have been nice to have, but you can't always get what you want, so I'm going to keep it going first with only three drops is not the worst thing. When it runs out a Rakdos. Okay, so it's Shambling Gas off the rip. We do get another white source. Love that. Which means we get blue-black. So we'll go with black first. And then, how do we want to deal with the, the gas? Do we want to try to exile it? Because they're going to have Deadly Dispute more than likely. Okay, they go straight for Underdog. Which is a better target to exile, though. Alright, we'll exile the... Uh, we'll exile the, uh, the Underdog first. Because we don't want the Underdog coming back and being able to Blitz later. Um, so we want to go with the Apparition over the Brutal Cathar. Plus, it comes back as a 2-2 Spirit. Which is smaller than what it would have been before. Alright, that's... Scary. This is Mardu, so that could be something like Doomscar, which we would hate to see. You know what we're going to do? We're going to entice them here. We're going to entice them to play their negative 1-1 counter on the Apparition, which would slow down their mana production, which they really desperately need, clearly, because they missed some land drops. Come on. Do the minus 1-1. One, one. You know you want to. Let's go. So we made, we made them waste their, their Shambling Gas ability to not create a treasure. And uh, now they're they're hurting on mana, and uh, we're good to go. To teach you. you love to see it. There's a scoop. Yeah, that was a pretty good play on our part, I think. Um, obviously, it really, really sucks to not hit your land drops, and I, I feel them on that. But uh, we kind of got them there with that shambling gas play. So really happy we went that route. GG. Wandering Emperor is such a beast of a card, man. It really is. Wandering Emperor is so good aesthetically to the artwork on it i just i'm a big fan of wandering emperor all around such a cool card i uh i need to get going on mythic here so we're off to a good start though kind of cruising along so hopefully get the mythic uh pretty fast this se uh, season hopefully uh this hand is actually not bad at all we've got the familiar uh restoration as our three drop and then we can actually start copying stuff too love that love that You know what I really want to showcase, though, and, and play is Jacob. Jacob is really cool, especially with the Stonebinder familiar as a uh, two drop. Because Stonebinder comes out, Jacob comes back, uh, down on two. And then after that turn, we get to basically start exiling things like crazy. <sighs> I am pretty tired today, I can't lie. I'm trying to fight through it, but... All right, there we go. Just the uh, the tap... the uh, Yeah, the tap land's fine. Yeah, a little tired today. Stayed up late, actually helping my friend uh, with uh, some deck building stuff here on Magic, and then also played some Apex. And uh, that's a pretty normal Friday for me. So uh, it was whatever. I stayed up super late, which is totally normal. I normally will just sleep in the next day. But my wife 
had to go get her car uh, oil change in the morning and she was going to shuttle back home. And uh, she uh, changed the plans up for the shuttle, decided to stay there and wait. So the kids woke up and then I had to take care of them and I was very, very tired. It was way too early for me to wake up. <laughs> I stayed up way too late for that. <laughs> I would have gone to bed so much earlier had I known. All right, so they're playing the same thing as us so far. They're playing abs and colors, but world tree means they're running maybe five colors. So far, all we see those abs and. And what do we want to do here with this next turn? Because there's nothing to hit with the gelatinous cube. Obviously, wandering emperor is a nice play, but do we want to play wandering emperor out immediately to get the one one counter and get some more value on our attack, or do we want to be patient with it and play it on the uh, the back end? I don't know. I don't know. Ah, big move here. Big move. Binding of the old gods comes to mind. So I actually I'm going to hold on to uh, the wandering emperor. I'm going to let them binding the uh, restoration. If that's the play they decide to go with. Very likely that that's going to be the case. We'll see. All right. They're going to ramp up just like we did. Another restoration, okay. They're tapped out, meaning no more plays this turn, so might as well get this down and get it out of our hands so we can stop clicking next, 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 and just get going here. No more priority holds. Sometimes priority holds get a little annoying to have to click next every turn when you don't need to. So let's just get that down and out of the way. That's pretty cool because we can steal their uh, restoration uh, next turn if we find a blue source. Um, need the blue source though. Need it badly. Need it badly. If we can't, if we can't blue source out here, we can always just gelatinous cube. So it's all good on that front. But would still love to steal the uh, the architect off of them. That'd be great just really flood the board over here on this side but they obviously are running sweepers i would imagine uh they're running every color we've seen kind of controlish cards you know like that's it's not exactly an aggro card yeah there it is there it is all right might as well put some damage on the board Devastating mastery when you're that's a weird sweeper. I was I I, I was thinking about it too. I'm like they're probably not gonna be running devastating mastery or farewell based on the fact that they're running enchantments, but here we are. Incorrect. Incorrect, Swayze. You are wrong. But you know what? These types of uh you know sweepers don't affect shield counters. So we might attack in here and just uh shield counter up with the operative. There's an argument to be said I should have cycled that card out, but whatever. It's all good. So if they do want to sweep the board again, uh, we are going to be left with a 4-3 still. Um, and be able to attack their face. Unless, of course, it's Meat Hook Massacre or something like that, but... Path of the World Tree is fine. You get a land and then they can pay the five colors and two extra mana to sacrifice. Gain two life, I lose two life, deals two damage. To target creature. And they created a 2 2 bear. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. They don't have enough mana to do that. They have one, two, three, four, five. And then the one with the Celestis. There we go. That's more of what I thought was going to happen there. So we get to, get to keep our 4 4. Our 4 3, sorry. 4 3 goes in for an attack. And. I don't know. If they have spot removal, I'm going to regret not playing another cube. But if they have sweepers, I'm going to regret playing the cube. You get what I'm saying? That's a tough position here because they play spot removal to remove this. Going to regret not playing this to keep it out for the uh, lethal. If they play another sweeper, I'm going to regret playing uh, the cube out. So it's just one of those things like, what do you think they're going to do? I think the fact that they ran two sweepers, I'm going to bank on the fact that now the rest of their hand is probably spot removal. So the second cube to me in my head makes more sense than not putting out the second cube. I hope that makes sense. Nope, it's another mastery, of course. Why not a third mastery, you know? This is so annoying. 
This is so annoying. I just don't know if I should play out the flare or not. Gosh darn it. If they, what if they have another dev? Uh, there's no way they have another devastating mastery. I'm going for it. I'm putting out lethal here. I'm putting out lethal here. I'm putting out lethal. They're still going to have spot removal though. I, I've got to imagine binding of the old gods is in this deck. There's no way it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm calling their bluff on a third. Okay. That doesn't help their case that much at all, really. I'm calling, I was calling their bluff on the devastating mastery. So I think we got it though. I think we got it. It's, this is just a, uh, we'll see how the turn ends here. They still got some mana to work with, which doesn't feel great. The Celestis obviously helps them with a mana as well. And uh, they're going to draw two planes. I don't know what they're doing yet, but obviously they're an enchantment build here. Why? See, they have Brilliant Restoration, which brings back all artifacts and enchantments. They have a bunch of artifacts and enchantments, obviously. And then they run things like Devastating Mastery, which makes no sense to me. I don't know. It just seems like it kind of contradicts itself. Like Doomscar makes sense, you know? Sweepers make sense, but types of sweepers that destroy all enchantments and artifacts as well. I, oh, I guess because they're reanimating them. Okay, I guess that makes a little bit more sense in my head. Okay, so they don't care if they blow up enchantments because they get them back. Makes sense. All right. And we win the game here. Let's go, baby. Give me that. You're mine now. You're my juke guy naturalist now. Welcome to the team. Thanks for your contribution. GG's. Wow, we already uh, we ranked up pretty quick there. Wow, we are kind of cruising. Man, we are just cruising along right now at this deck. I'm loving it. Feeling really, really good about this, man. So much fun. We got a turn two, Jacob. We can definitely keep this. Turn two, Jacob can get rid of the uh, turn three, Jacob. So that's nice. Uh, what's really great about Jacob and the reason it fits so well in this deck is the fact that it doesn't actually cost any mana at all to tap and do its exiling effect. So that's really, really nice. Having three in the hand, not ideal. But again, we just tap Jacob and it deals with itself. Gets rid of the other one. All right, well, they drag and fire it. So that's cool. We have a backup. We do have a backup, but that means we're, we're working with an opponent here playing a lot of uh, potential like gold span dragon stuff. Uh, the Snowlands, not sure what that's about. Not sure what that's about. All right, well, I wish we would have got the Stonebinder first and then used Jacob's ability, but that's fine. That's A-OK. -okay. Memory Deluge, OK. That's something we can hit. That is something we can hit. Let's actually wait till they're uh, our turn so we can... Mm, actually, it doesn't matter, does it? We we're going to hit the... You know, yeah, let's do this. So we're going to hit you. We're going to attack in with the Stonebinder Familiar for two. And then we'll Jake up on their turn. The problem is, is... um. Ooh, burn down the house. You dirty dog. All right, I guess we'll do this. All right, it is what it is. Jacob gets blown up. We get to keep our Stonebinder familiar though. Uh, we're down to two cards in hand, which isn't ideal. Uh, not sure what to do here, to be honest, man. They reset us pretty hard there with that burn down the house. Ugh. Iteration. Okay, they're gonna go digging a little bit here. Wish we had, uh... Wish we had, like, memory deluge sometimes in this deck. In these particular instances where we're up against controlish type decks, because it's not every day you see control these days. Control is not at all the, uh, the priority in the meta. It's definitely aggro, which is why we built this deck, but... You know, when you do run into that control deck, you're like, dang, I just wish I had a few cards in this deck that dealt with that, but... Frostbite, you're annoying. All right, Goldspan Dragon's probably coming down here, I gotta imagine. Uh, we found out why they're running the snow mana, finally, because they got Frostbite in the deck. 
Jin Gitaxius. I would love, love, love nothing more than to steal you. So if you don't mind, let me draw a top deck uh, land here. That'd be great. Thank you so very much. I honestly can't thank you more for that. Give me that Jenga Taxius, baby. You love to see it. You love to see it. And we've got quite the board state developing here. And I would say Jenga Taxius works a little bit better against our opponent than it does against us. So thanks for uh, putting that into your deck. I really do appreciate it. And then any spell they cast here is going to be negated because of Jin's uh, ability to counter. They're struggling to figure out how to work around that. <laughs> yeah, they're highlighting their own Jenga taxi. It's like, what have I done? What have I done? I've created a monster. And we're using it against you. You know, that'd be really cool. Let's go ahead and steal the Leer. Yeah. Seems like a pretty cool idea. Seems like a pretty cool idea. Thanks for the Leer. And uh, extra vanishing verse is pretty, pretty nice. I mean, we're just, we're just showcasing every bit. Uh, <laughs> we're just showcasing how this is, uh, how this deck is so deadly. My goodness, man. My goodness. This is so much fun. So much better than my Boros Exile list. Um, I don't know about better competitively, but definitely better in the fun sense. Holy cow. Imagine the, just... Imagine the look on our opponent's face when they play Jenga Taxius and we just said, nah, yoink, yoink. Yoink, that's my no. And they're pretty upset right now, I can tell. The only good news for our opponent here is they got a ton of mana. So if they do happen to have two spells here and one of them works on something here, they can cast a one of them, get rid of it with the counter and then cast the other one. Uh, because again, they have so much mana to work with, but chances of them being able to deal with this entire board, highly unlikely. They would need something like an iteration and have it get canceled and then play a uh, burn down the house. That would be a perfect two card combo. I think they played two burn down the houses though. No, just one. Just one. So they would need those two cards specifically in their, their uh, repertoire to finish this. But I have a feeling we're getting roped out right now, guys. So there may be a little bit of an edit happening right about now because nobody wants to watch this. And we're back. All right. Let's go ahead and just smash their face here. Let's just smash their face and end this once and for all. Or not. They're not even going to let us smash their face because I forgot that they're going to hold priority here and then their face is going to blow up. So... Let us wait for the final rope. The countdown begins. Duh, duh. By the way, guys, if you're ever, you know, a, a viewer of my channel and you ever have an opponent do something to you that's outside of the meta and you don't particularly like that thing, don't rope them. It's really, really bad. Uh, I don't know. It's bad etiquette. It ruins the game. Takes away the fun for a lot of people. Makes people not want to play the game. You don't want that. So. <clears throat> but it happens honestly like once a video, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty rampant. But GG's. All right. That was really fun to be able to just freaking just absolutely decimate that is it player. Stealing their, their Jenga Taxius. Like that was just money. That was money in the bank. Um, opponent gets to go first here. We do have an a uh, access to a second white source for the apparition. This is a very slow hand though. I'm gonna actually mulligan this, which I wouldn't normally do, but I think in this case, pretty good mulligan. Um, do it like this, I guess. Turn two, vanishing verse. Hopefully, gets us where we need to go. If it's an aggro deck, we'll need to find a third land in order to hit our fourth land. So, hoping and praying for that third land, man. That's a great target for the Vanishing Verse. Super happy that I waited, or that I uh, mulligan that first hand. And uh, you might be asking why I'm doing this on the main phase of an instant card. It's because if we let them on tap, good chance they have Deadly Dispute or things like Obnixilis, which can exile or that can uh, sacrifice it. And then we're in trouble because 
we will uh they'll get some value off of it so let's just not allow them to get that value off by getting that down as fast as possible we're sitting really nice right now raiju they're definitely gonna attack in uh there's a good argument to be had to just play the wandering emperor here and exile that right away um i don't think we do anything here i think we like everything in our hand so i think yeah i think i'm gonna play the wandering emperor playing the vanishing verse on on our main phase really kind of got us into this weird groove now where we're playing things on the main phase but i think it still works out in our favor to do things this way gold span dragon annoying annoying but not the end of the world um maybe i'll undercover operative that to be honest yeah i think i'm gonna operative that it's a great creature to copy uh let's go with blue and then uh we can actually glass pole mimic and make another one too that's actually pretty freaking solid i can't lie pretty solid You know what? Actually, I could Spirit Realm their Dragon away. That might be worth uh, a little bit more to us. Thank you so much for the Gold Span, by the way. Gold Span's a great creature. Dude, this deck is really cool. <laughs> every to every game we play, I'm just like, whoa, our deck is like really cool. I didn't I didn't realize we were gonna do that. It's like every single time. Gold Span Dragon. Okay, are they gonna get aggressive with it though? Because that'd be pretty shocking if they are. Not shocking, but. I just, I wouldn't if I were them. Oh, they're staying aggressive. They must have something in their hand, though, that they can cast as well. Maybe a second spell here that targets or something. Maybe a dragon's fire. That could be annoying. Raiju's not a dragon, though. Something I thought, you know, something I considered a while back. I try to make a Raiju dragon deck, and I'm like, wait, it's not even a dragon. Looks like a dragon. Looks like a dragon. Talks like a dragon. Not a dragon, though. All right, let's go. This is uh, this is becoming pretty fun. I can't lie. This is getting pretty fun. I can't lie. End our turn. We're gonna vanishing versus our dragon. I mean, what do you guys? What do they even do against this? If you guys are running creatures at all, like if our opponents are running creatures, they're in trouble. <laughs> they're in trouble. There's nothing that resolves. It's just nonstop beatdown. Okay, no chance they stay aggressive here. No chance they attack in. They're out of cards in hand. I'm actually gonna, I would Vanishing versus right here now to keep it from getting another treasure, but there's nothing left in their hand to play. Let me just see what they do here. I don't think they're gonna attack. Didn't think so. Didn't think so, bud. GG. GG and they didn't even realize that our last card in hand can exile their storm chaser either. That was just an absolute b -b beat down GG Man, we are cruising here, man. We're just straight up cruising right now <sighs> What do we got here uh, a couple vanishing verses into a couple of exiling type creatures I'm gonna need a lot of lands here, but uh, I can make it work with the vanishing verses. Hopefully if this is a control matchup, we're just screwed. I'll be completely honest with you guys. If it's control, we're toast. Uh, let's go here and then we'll put this as black. I think it's the play. Oh, no, it's not the play, is it? I need double white. Oh, come on, Matthew. You're better than that. Oh, I screwed this up, didn't I? Well, we're going to have to hold off on the apparition for now because I screwed up the land drops. All right, we're going to kind of rinse repeat the same thing we did last game. Take care of the uh, tenacious underdog before it can get hit with a deadly dispute or anything like that. We're against Jund this time around. <sighs> That's annoying because it's got a discard effect off of the uh, off of the ward. Are we? What are we willing to discard here? Because we're gonna have to kill this thing, man. We're gonna have to kill it with this. Um, I don't know if I want to get a brutal Cathar down on it because if I do, they're gonna make me discard, and if they kill brutal Cathar, then we're just there was no point. Ugh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't like it. 
I don't like the ward discard. It's not fun. Strangle. I guess that's fine. We got some removal out of their hand for things that don't necessarily matter as much. All right, that's annoying. That is annoying. And uh, this is going to transform. So to avoid that transformation, I think I'm going to have to just cast a Vanishing Verse again. You know what? No. No, I don't agree. I think actually taking the Tenacious Underdog with Brutal Cathar is fine. Because they might blow this up. Whatever. Brutal Cathar dies. They get their Tenacious Underdog back. It can't attack this turn. So we're kind of chilling right there. Um, and then I could pass the turn, allow it to transform the same as the Graveyard Trespasser, and then Vanishing Versus on their turn. And then look to flip it back over at some point to steal another creature. So I think ultimately not a terrible situation here. Would love to see a land though. I mean, a land would be... A land would be top notch. Not the land I was looking for, but good enough, I suppose. So yikes, man. This is so yikes. I can't let him get any cards, though. I just can't. We're just too far. Oh, we're so far behind right now. I need a, a land. I just need a land, and then I can Mind Flayer this thing, and I'm good to go, but... Ah, oh, the Hive. Yeah, we're getting beat down here pretty good. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage right here on board. Shoot. I can't even kill anything on a trade block either. So bad. All of those are just solid attacks right there. Alright, if I play two spells, I get to exile something, which is nice, but I don't think I have the mana for two. If I if that would have been an on-tap land, I would have been fine, but it wasn't, so. So here we are, stuck. <laughs> Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, oh. Super unfortunate. Uh, two of those get through. And then I got a double block one. That's two damage. They activate the hive. They win. If they activate the hive, they win. We'll see what they do, though. They don't activate the hive. Wow. Talk about lucky, huh? They might have some sort of burn spell at target's face, though. Okay, they make two mistakes in one turn. Love that. There's a good chance they screwed up here badly. Ah, oh, okay. Good enough. Good enough. That's gonna happen, unfortunately. Gosh darn it. I thought I thought maybe right there we got so lucky that they made a couple misplays, but no, they had it still. Never never didn't have it. Alright, we have time for one more. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's keep this wind train going. Obviously, I know we had to drop the game here, but it's just ultimately this deck's been performing pretty darn good. Uh going first again with nothing till three drop doesn't feel great, but we are going first, so let's give it a shot. Don't want to mulligan too many times. We don't like that. Uh, that indicates this is probably going to be some form of a control deck. And if it is, we are in a bit of trouble here. Um, I don't know. It's tough. We've we've dealt with is a few times now and we've done okay. Um, I think I'm going to go with the blue because we're going to get a white source here. Probably should have played that for black. Yeah, I regret not playing that for black because I thought we were going to go white here, but then I'm like, you know what? Should have played that black and then blue. Got my white here. It's all good, though. It's all good. We've got a fantastic hand if our opponent, you know, ends up playing some sort of mid rangey with uh, type, you know, creature types, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, There's nothing here I want to play. Let's decline that. Let's uh, Let's get the Wandering Emperor out this next turn. Wandering Emperor into two tutus and just get some some pressure going with that and uh, we'll see if we can Maybe get the the party started opponents running Jawari disruption. We got to be careful But uh, I think because they played that out as a land. I'm feeling pretty confident in this landing Could be wrong though. Could be very wrong. We'll see. Yep had a second one. They had a second one All right, fair enough Got our second black source, which is nice Gosh that wandering Emperor would have done Serious, serious damage for us. Um, we can touch the spirit realm this and save it if it gets blown up by anything. 
Obviously, though, with the blue and red, I don't think it's going to get blown up. Um, I'm going to just pass the turn here. Memory Deluge or, you know, Big Score comes to mind as their next play here or Goldspan Dragon. Those are really the, kind of the three big options here from our opponent. So they are looking to do something with this. They show a Goldspan Dragon. We love that, which means we get to recast this uh, at the end of the turn, which just pumps up our mana even more. And now that we know Goldspan Dragon's coming, the Vanishing Verse gets a little bit better. Getting ourselves some more value. Love it, love it, love it. My turn. We've ramped up quite a bit here. Um, I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the Brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar does have more options as far as things it can hit over the Skyclave Apparition, but the fact that it can transform and deal more damage over time potentially is uh really what we're looking for. We're looking to go a little more aggro. All right, so they blow it up. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Our um, our restoration is going to flip to the other side after this turn. So getting some value there. Uh, we obviously know gold spans coming. I would really like to see another vanishing verse off the top of our deck just to ensure that we can answer the call if there's a second gold span. Okay, very strange. Very strange. Oh, man, I really hate doing this. I really do, but it's nighttime now, so the Brutal Cathar does come down as its 3-3 first striker. So I'm going to play it out again. Hold up in the Vanishing Verse. Look to do 6 damage a turn now, which is quite a bit of damage, to be honest. We don't have any protection, unfortunately, for these creatures, so if they want to blow them up with another Dragon's Fire, which they do have a third one, why wouldn't they? I <sighs> think we're in trouble. They're just drawing very good right now. They've got a ton of removal. No creatures for us to take advantage of. Just absolutely destroying us at the moment. Let's get rid of that. Can't have that floating around for too long. Probably going to get Fading Hope back to their hand. Yep, why not? Why not? We transform back into the uh, Brutal Cathar. It's tough, man. It's tough. This is this is not the matchup we want to see. And the fact that they drew all pretty much every one of their dragon's fires is pretty brutal, man. Um, yeah, we'll be all right, though, I think. Uh, as long as they don't have their infinite combo loop here, with, which is like, you know, the, the big scores and, you know, finding the ability to go vigilance and all that. All right. Let's see what they want to do with the Brutal Cathar here. They take the damage. All right, we play a second Brutal Cathar. And because that's our second spell this turn, we do flip on this next turn. Taking their Goldspan Dragon. And the opponent probably has another Fading Hope, I would assume. No, we get to steal it. Okay, maybe it's another Goldspan Dragon. I got to imagine they've got an answer here for this. I've got to imagine it's got to be something. They've got so much mana to work with here. Okay, yeah, there's their answer. Goldspan's back in play. Goldspan hits us again. Keeps the pressure on. Uh, but again, I mean, if we don't cast anything here, we might be able to get away with one. Okay, that's pretty good. Because we can dissolve it too. One, two, three, four. Not this turn, but we can dissolve it, which will help out a lot. Oh, don't tell me they have an answer here. We do we do get out of range of the the prismatic uh the prismari command though, so uh okay. Yikes. Yikes, okay. Eight, nine, ten. They have eleven damage in my face right now. Yikes. Yep, here comes the the hall. All right, well, we're going to need to see a very, very good top deck here. Uh, when I say very good, I mean like Mind Flayer good. Ah, they go face the Smart Command. 
All right, well, I mean, we had a pretty good run with this deck, ran into a pretty bad matchup there, unfortunately. Uh, ultimately, though, the deck performed, I mean, it outperformed uh, what I thought it would do, getting us to Diamond Tier 3. Feeling pretty good about that. But uh, yeah, just that one, that one was just not for us as far as the matchup goes. But uh, pretty good way to, pretty good video, I can't lie. So let's go ahead and break this deck down in full for the uh, full analysis here. That will conclude today's gameplay footage, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We are going to break the deck down in full now. So if you want to stick around for that, we are going to break this thing down, talk about the deck and how we built it and maybe some things we would change. Uh, but before I do so, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to everyone who's made it this far into the video. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm when you stay this long. So huge shout out to you guys. I do appreciate that very, very much. With that being said, let's take a look and talk about the list. So very simply, like we put in the intro, I did build this deck around Stonebinders Familiar, which is a simple one drop that grows with the, you know, exile mechanic, which we all know now by this time. Um, and the deck is simply built around that uh, effect. So um, with the Stonebinders Familiar, you're only going to get the plus one one counter if you're exiling things on your turn. So it works really well, though, with things like, you know, Brutal Cathar, Apparition and Gelatinous Cube, which is why we threw those in the deck immediately, especially being that we're in the build of, uh, you know, Esper. And um, I, I really also wanted to play get, uh, Glass Pole Mimic and Undercover Operative to copy some of our creatures. And I thought this would be a really good deck to try those out in because who doesn't want more exiling effects? Who doesn't want to tempo out, you know, even further and, pro you know, progress your game plan even further? Um, and I found out just how good that could be with, you know, things like Mind Flayer on the top end as well. So uh, very, very cool deck that I'm really, really, you know, proud of that, you know, came out pretty strong. Uh, we've obviously got some great effects like Vanishing Verse that you guys got the chance to see, as well as the Wandering Emperor, which is allowing us to exile things with its minus two ability. But it's also a great, you know, card if you run into some, you know, more controlling type decks. You want to have some Planeswalkers to generate some, you know, multiple uh, pieces of value that your opponent's going to have to deal with. Um, obviously the restoration came in handy as well because you know the stonebinder is familiar with the restoration you might not you might not think oh that that pairs well together because it doesn't really on the surface pair well together but on the third saga of any saga the card's gonna exile which does trigger the stonebinder for free so uh passively on turn three of uh, this card being on the field stonebinder is going to get a one one counter without you having to spend a, a a single mana for it so it's actually a pretty cool effect in that regard um, also, I really like the Jacob with this deck too. It, Jacob was dealt with really, really quickly in almost every occasion, uh, which is not a bad thing. It just means that our opponents were using up the resources to kill this thing fast because they did not want to see it flip. We never got a chance to flip it, but paired with the uh, Stonebinder to just get unlimited free value of growing the Stonebinder every single turn by, you know, tapping this thing and also kind of sifting through your cards to find what you need was really, really cool. I really, uh, I really enjoyed that combination really well. Um, also the uh, touch of the spirit realm, you know, playing it defensively as well as offensively with its channel ability and to be able to just exile a permanent. I think this card is fantastic. Um, I think I've got this deck pretty much dialed in. We've tried a couple of other things that I want to talk to you guys about real quick. Um, if you type in exile in your filter here, it gives you some of the best exiling. I mean, it gives you all the exiling cards, uh, you know, as options. There's plenty of plenty of options here, guys, that you can do with this deck. And uh, we've tried a couple of them. So let me tell you about a couple of my failures here. So if you go to blue, uh, there are some, you know, counter magic, right? There's counter spells uh, like reject and uh, let's see. Oh, dissipate. Um, you've also got syncopate, things like that, where if you counter a spell, it goes to exile. And I thought to myself, that'd be really cool with this deck because we're trying to tempo out, you know, get a creature down, protect it, grow it over time. Uh, that's not how the familiar works. Um, I reread it again. Obviously, it didn't work uh, with those spells because you have to get your creatures into exile on your turn. So the counter spell and the counter magic didn't really work. Um, it was just something I kind of tried at first and I was like, realized I'm like, oh yeah, that doesn't even actually work with that mechanic. So we kind of nixed that play. And then before we had Jacob, I actually was running the Cosmina. Now, let me tell you guys, the Cosmina, 50-50, but what it does work and go off it is chef's kiss. It's so good. Um, Jacob, though, a lot more consistent. I'd say Jacob's got a, like a 90% success rate. This has a 50-50. And what I mean by that is Cosmina comes down um, on turn three, and then the following turn it exiles itself, which gives the Stonebinder, you know, an extra tick. But also the Omen Keel side of things does some really good damage for us because we get the uh, Stonebinder in, Omen Keel comes down on two, 
And when you attack in with the Omen Keel, your opponent's going to have to dis you know, discard cards, but put them into exile, which is going to trigger your um, familiar to grow. And then you're also going to steal lands from your opponent, which is really, really cool. Um, that was what we were using most of the time. Um, so ultimately, this card, pretty freaking cool. You might want to try it yourselves and see how you like it, but it plays really well with the familiar. But like I said, Jacob was just a little more consistent because it gets us through our cards quickly. We're not trying to get a ton of card advantage with this deck. We're trying to kill our opponent pretty fast. You know, exile their stuff, smash their face, rinse, repeat, right? So this did a little bit better job of doing that because it comes down on two and then you can just tap it for free every single turn. Uh, but those were some of the, the things that I tried out um, that you know, ended up not making the cut. Uh, there were, there's still plenty and plenty of uh, options for you to, you know, to play in this deck. There's so many different exiling effects. Obviously, just some, some straight up exile, you know, removal things like soul transfer or baleful mastery. Um, you got a lot of options. This deck can go a million different directions, but ultimately, I think I like where it's at because it's a very tempo-y deck where you know we're trying to generate value at the same time as smash our opponent's face. Obviously, control matchups are going to be very tough. Um, actually, let me show you one more card here. Um, this might be a really good addition if you're trying to, if you're having trouble with like board sweepers and your opponent's uh, control decks. Uh, obviously, Meat Hook Massacre pretty much gets around everything, but everything else like Doom Scar, uh, the Selfless Glyph Weaver, this card might be worth trying out because you can exile this thing at instant speed for no mana, doesn't require to be tapped. You just exile it it's very very simple it's a three drop it's a two three and it gives all your other creatures indestructibility which can really end the game if you're talking about control matchups um and them trying to hit you with the sweeper so something to try maybe give, uh, give it a look also elite spellbinder maybe try that out as well if you're, you're running into a lot of control it also plays well with the stonebinder's familiar but ultimately i like where my deck's at it's an absolute aggro eater so i'm going to keep it that way um but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video man and uh lastly before i get out of here today's monday i'm going to try to get you guys a uh, you know five videos this week um, i'm on vacation as of right now i'm probably not even at home right now when you're seeing this but i want to say thank you so much for watching today i appreciate you um stay tuned for tomorrow's video and lastly huge shout out goes to the marty mob i really do appreciate every single person in the marty mob they are people who help support the channel through the membership program here. And I want to say thank you every single time because I, I I appreciate them so much for everything. Honestly, they help grow the channel. They help keep the channel afloat and they help me do what I can do, um, you know, with uh, some form of like compensation. So I, I can justify this to my wife in some shape or form. But anyways, I want to say thank you so much to them. Uh, they help you know in so many ways but if you guys want to learn more about the marty mob you can hit the join button down below or the link in the description and uh yeah that'll do it for today's video man i'll see you guys on the next one see you here tomorrow and have a good rest of your day peace yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. hit up three times like a hat trick yeah. the name is says you know patrick yeah, yeah. if you play him then it's tragic hit him with the mythic yeah that's magic yeah Ooh. ftg that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe where do you upload man Man, all of the time Coming with the best decks, this is the meta This ain't cheap